of order the Amberley Council meeting of May 9th, 2016. Please call the roll. Rich Bardock. Here. Peg Conway. Here. Ed Hattenbach. Alita Kamine. Here. Tom Musing. Here. Ray Warren. Here. Natalie Wolf. Here. Scott Larmer. Here. Kevin Frank. Here. Chief Wallace. Sorry, Lieutenant Bloom. Here. Rick Kay. Here. Now if everyone could please rise and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. First item on our agenda is the approval of our minutes from our April meeting. These minutes were circulated <coughs> earlier and there were there was a su suggested change from the vice mayor and two suggested changes uh, from Councilman Warren. Are there any other uh, suggested changes, deletions or additions? If not, we can consider the minutes approved with those three additions. Um, next, uh, we were going to uh, recognize Wayne Singer tonight, mm -hmm. um, and maybe if Wayne comes later, we'll recognize him. Wayne uh, had, is um, retiring from the Stormwater Advisory Board, and Wayne has served on the Stormwater Advisory Board for more than 13 years since the Stormwater Advisory Board started. Mm -hmm and I think has really uh, been very instrumental in getting that board up and running and starting from a very difficult point. So it's very appropriate that we recognize Wayne, but if he comes in later, we'll recognize him then. If not, we'll do it at a later meeting. Uh, next, we have um, some citizens to, oh, I'm sorry. I was so anxious. Um, <laughs> we will move back to the finance report um, and the village manager will present the finance report for March. The UAN report has been included in your council packet. I'd like to add a few comments to the, uh, to the summary that uh, you've been provided as well. We typically look at the general fund and the general fund revenues. Uh, the earnings tax is our most significant source of revenue in the village. And for the month of March, the village collected $242,000. Uh, this is up about almost 300% from March of 2015's collection of $81,000. And as I've explained before in, in previous discussions about this is that uh, when you do a snapshot of earnings tax, it ebb and flows. There is not typically a rhyme or reason why some things change or whether they go up or whether they, whether they go down. Uh, at our finance committee this past month when we did do an analysis of the of the earnings tax, breaking it down from the um, net profit, withholding, and the individual, which are the three categories that we have for earnings tax. It would appear as though the, uh, the village received a large um, amount of fourth quarter um, uh, estimate checks uh, in the beginning of January of 2016. So normally, and this is a timing issue, normally that would have fallen into 2015. If you recall, our 2015 collections were down. So I think this is more of a timing issue. And the same thing on the net profits. Uh, we did uh, receive some late file returns, received those in January 16. We should have received those earlier. And then the other part of I wanted to comment on the earnings tax, since it is up significantly this, uh, this quarter, is that uh, companies are complying with uh, sending their payments in monthly which was a new requirement of House Bill 5 that went into effect on January 1, which the council adopted as part of our income tax code last year. So I just want to mention that about the, about the earnings tax collections. So far this year, we have collected uh, $1.1 .1 million of the 2.6 that we had estimated for, uh, for this year. So we've already collected 43% of the uh, earnings tax. In regards to property tax, the village did not receive any property tax. And for local government fund, which is uh, some of the, re the revenue we received from the state, we received a little over $3,800. So in total for the general fund, we received um, uh, four, our estimate for revenues for the year, $4.4 million. We've taken in $1.3 million, which represents about 30% of our general fund collections so far this year. On the expense side of it, for the month of March, the village uh, spent almost $400,000 out of the general fund. 
We have a $4.3 million uh, general fund budget, and we've spent uh, in total $1 million. So we've spent about 24%. So we're really, we are right on track in regards to expenses. And that leaves our unencumbered fund balance at $3.8 million. And that's where we have uh, been staying for the most part for the last uh, several months. And that concludes my finance report. Are there any questions for the manager? If not, we will move on to uh, citizens to speak. Uh, first, Jamie Carl. Uh, my name is Jamie Carl, which I'm sure that people have heard a little bit about. Um, I'll start out with just an overview in case you aren't aware. Um, Duke Energy has currently identified three proposed paths of a 30-inch natural gas pipeline. One of the routes, which is the pink line, would run pretty much through the center of Amberley Village. It would run along Ridge as well as Galbraith, and then at some point along Galbraith, it would divert through residential backyards. Um, it's a little unclear on the map on their website, but I attended their meeting, and from what I could tell from the satellite imagery, it, it's properties between Spring Valley and Crestdale. As a homeowner whose property could potentially be affected by this pipeline, I received a letter in the mail to notify me of this project. Despite the fact that the project would literally change the landscape of our village, I was told only property owners along the pipeline were notified. I attended the meeting held by Duke in March, I am opposed to the pink line that would run through Amberley for a variety of reasons. I think the pipeline would have a massive, devastating environmental impact to Amberley. The construction would require an easement from property owners. I was told this would be a minimum of 15 feet on either side of the 30-inch line. Once the easement is in place, no structures of any kind, such as fences, sheds, or even a driveway post would be allowed. Additionally, no planting, such as trees, would be allowed on this easement. Since the route follows Ridge and Galbraith, that would mean the loss of numerous large mature trees that currently line our main roads. Duke did say at the meeting when I asked them that they would consider planting some trees to mitigate the tree loss. However, it would take literally decades for those newly planted saplings to reach the size of our current mature trees. Removing the trees, I think, along our roads would have a negative impact on the rural feel that we currently have in our village. I think the other thing that we can't ignore is the safety component. Uh, pipeline ruptures can and do occur. Um, the safety officer actually told me in March that they're so uncommon that he couldn't even think of one that had ruptured, and he said he had worked for Duke for decades. However, on April 29th of this year, there was a pipeline explosion outside of Pittsburgh. The line that exploded was a 30-inch natural gas pipeline. That's the same thing that's being proposed to go through the center of our community. In this incident, which I do have news articles, if anybody is interested, that I printed off that I can give to you, a home that was 700, several hundred yards away from the explosion was destroyed. For my personal property of this line, it would be 100 feet from my front door, and that's me on Galbraith. In the properties between Spring Valley and Crestdale, they would be 20 to 50 feet away from their homes. So the line that exploded in Pittsburgh was in a very rural area. We obviously, although not as densely populated as some parts of Cincinnati, are more densely populated than the Pittsburgh area. So I understand, I'm a user of natural gas in my home myself, and I get that natural gas has to be transported somehow. However, I just don't think it should be in a densely populated rural area. And I believe Duke could explore other routes that would place this line and maybe more of a rural area farther away from private homes. I also understand that Amberley Council has no authority over this decision on where Duke is going to place the pipeline, but I do think Council has the power to keep the citizens of Amberley informed. I think this pipeline would affect not only property owners directly on the line, but the village as a whole. Thank you for your time. And I do have copies of the article, and I printed off the copies of the uh, what the line would look like if anybody is interested in seeing them. Do I have a copy of the article, please? Yeah. And we do have one other resident that will be speaking on this. I didn't know if anybody had any specific questions for Jamie. Okay. Uh, next, 
Mary Stopas. Good evening, Mary Stolpass, 7370 Willowbrook Lane, 45237. Um, I do echo the comments Jamie made, and I just wanted to add that the Environmental Stewardship Committee is starting to follow this discussion. And we have uh, joined together with NOPE, which it stands for Neighbors Opposed to the Pipeline Extension, as it goes from Amberley through Blue Ash. Um, they have uh, been meeting and have um, alerted us to the work that they've done and because it's the continuation of the pipeline in Amberley, we thought it was a natural extension to uh, work with them. Um, they're currently evaluating three routes, two of which um, are uh, ones, the one that goes along the railroad tracks uh, kind of parallel to Reading Road, so it's at the edge, uh, western edge of Amberley Village, and then the one that Jamie spoke of that runs through the heart of the village. I think that um, the you know, removal of vegetation and the erection of fences um, will be a devastating blow to the village as we know it today um, due to how we pride ourselves on the greenery and the natural features. Um, the schedule that they've laid out is um, they're going to, uh, they're beginning surveying and designing the project this spring and the summer. They're going to start applying for permits. Um, they're going to complete the design next spring and next summer they'll be constructing it and by fall of 2018 it will be completed. Um, we are going to be following this and um, hope to have a meeting with the Blue Ash people sometime in the next uh, two weeks and we'll encourage you to look on next door for the uh, meeting date and we'll be keeping people up, up to speed on that. Thank you. Okay, are there any questions or comments? The staff has been working on gathering the information about uh, the, the pipeline extension. It's referred to as the Central Corridor Gas Pipeline. I provided information in the manager's report. But uh, this past week and then today, uh, what is on our website is information related specifically to this particular project. So we have been able to give a synopsis of what occurred, the public meeting we held on the 22nd and 23rd, and then we also linked various sites for residents to go to our website so that they can link to find out more about the proposed uh, pipeline extension. Also the map that was, was referenced by, by, uh, by Jamie is on there along with a uh, frequently asked questions and a brochure that, uh, that has been provided to this. And I would just encourage residents as we do on the website to express whether they have want support or they want to oppose this issue or they want a public comment to provide that to the power siting board because uh, Amberley is not, does not have uh, any say in this particular project but uh, the power siting board is the next step for the decision to be made in regards to one of those routes. And that information is also on the website. So I would just encourage residents to go to, that web to our website and all the information is contained there. And consistent with that, we've had some discussions. Clearly we have a role both as public officials and the administration to ensure that our residents are mm -hmm. well educated on this. And so that's an important part of it. And as Mrs. Stillpass mentioned, the Environmental Stewardship Committee will have this on the agenda uh, and we'll be looking at whether uh, the committee wants to uh, issue a letter or whatever. And I will bring this back up under my uh, mayor's report for uh, council to determine whether they wanted to do anything else. Um, I just wanted to add a comment regarding the information on the Power Siding Board's website that should Amberley be part of their proposed, like the ultimately chosen route, I do believe there is a real role for local government to intervene and make comment. I mean, it would have to be at a legal level, but I think it, as we are doing, I think it's important for all of us to be informed, informed as to how this is unfolding. And I also attended the meeting at PRM back in March. I am not right on the route, but evidently within the distance to merit a letter. Um, and they, it was indicated to me that night they could do portions of, it's not like a hard and fast, it's this or it's this. They can combine pieces in their ultimate request to the power siding board. So 
we need to be very proactive and clear and respond. I just wanted to thank our speakers for, for coming. I know this um, certainly impacts some people more directly than others. I think it's helpful for all of us to hear from those who are extremely directly impacted. And just encourage everybody here is very, you know, on our website and everything, but I know there are, we have a lot of neighbors who may not be, who may not be paying attention. So, you know, please share this information with your networks also broadly from, from our site as well. Councilman Warren. Um, I just wanted to also thank the speakers for coming in and sharing what you've learned. Uh, certainly very important information. Um, Mr. Larmer, although the village doesn't have a vote in this, um, I would assume that if, if the council decides, we can certainly express our sentiments to the powers that be. That. Certainly anybody can submit a comment. So the Power Siding Board is seeking comments from anybody about the proposed three routes that they have identified. Right, but in official capacity, the council could um, submit a letter. Could. Mm -hmm. okay. Could, but it... In reality, it would be more effective if all 3,500 residents of the village no did it. Okay. No. Do you need a petition drive for that? If there was a petition drawn up and everybody signed it in the village, would that do anything? As I, as I said, uh, when we come to the marriage report, that's all I want to talk about in the marriage report. I want to determine whether council wants to refer this to a committee or what they want to do. So we will talk about that. We, we really, I mean, the policy is we, other than residents that have registered to speak at council meetings, we, we really cannot um, just recognize people from the floor. But having said that, we do have one other resident, and there was an oversight as to, with respect to this resident, she was supposed to be on the agenda, uh, but so I invite Kelly Hollitz forward as the last resident to speak. And again, just state your name yes. and your address. Hello, my name is Kelly Hollitz. Good evening. I live at 8560 Kentland Court. Um, some of you may uh, have received an email message from me through the village's website uh, a few months ago regarding some new signage that was placed around the village, and it was basically signage that was replacing existing signage. Um, I do have a little bit of a personal stake in this. I'm the owner of First Star Safety, and we sell construction and traffic safety supplies. So with that in mind, um, I do know the marketplace and know that there are only um, basically three companies if the village was to purchase any of this equipment um, and wanted to do so locally, there's really only three options in the uh, tri-state region, and my firm is one of them. Um, I know myself and several other of my outside salespersons have been to the village and uh, to the service department and spoken with uh, several people in an attempt to introduce ourselves and our company and our offerings and uh, be able to be granted the opportunity to provide pricing for any of the products that the village may need. Um, I will say uh, as a bit of a sidebar, when I did send my email, Mr. Larmer reached out to me right away and uh, was able to get me in contact with some other um, other individuals that make some purchasing decisions with the village. Um, <clears throat> but I really I just simply wanted to introduce myself and my organization. Um, I did bring along, if anyone is interested, I did not um, seek out, I, not sure how Amberley's policy is. I know a lot of other municipalities, residents can request pricing after things have been purchased to see you know, where things lie. Um, I did not do so, however. The products for which I saw that were already installed, I have uh, compiled essentially a price quote as if the village was to come to us and ask us for a price quote for these particular items so that you could hopefully, um, if there's any discussion in the future, see that um, you know, hopefully we're extremely competitive and along the same lines of what uh, the village has already spent on the products that have been uh, installed uh, back in January, I believe it was. So, um, yeah, I have those if anyone would like them. Um, I'm happy to pass them out. There's two, or I can just leave them here perhaps. And that's about all I have. If anyone has any questions for me or anything, yes. Um, I just wanted to clarify and mm -hmm. comment. 
Pricing of purchases that the village has made, I would assume that is a public record that anybody can request, correct? So, yes, yes, so and that's you, what I'm stating. I did not do so prior to uh, putting the, my pricing but together. I just want to make it clear to you yeah. that you are welcome to that Absolutely. information. It's not a, a policy of the village. Sure. It's, a, it's a law that you're allowed to Sure, have and it. as I said, I realize that this is rather self-serving because I own a company that sells these products. However, at the other end of the spectrum, um, whether multiple bids and competitive quotes were um, sought after. Um, again, like I said, in, the village could do so from other companies outside of the area or from websites or things like that. Um, but it would make quite a bit of sense, I would think, to shop locally. Uh, my office is in Lockland, and um, I know the company where uh, they were purchased, Clean, is in Sharonville, which, again, local, I understand. But um, just wanted to bring all of this to anyone's attention, because hopefully we can be of some help and save the, the village and its taxpayers uh, money in the end, because we find ourselves to be extremely competitive. So thank you for the opportunity. Good night. Thank you. Well, thank you very Thanks. much. We'll now move on to committee report, and the first committee is the Finance Committee, and in um, Councilman Hattenbach's absence, I will make the report for the um, Finance Committee. Before you tonight is uh, Resolution 2016-15. What this resolution will do is it would give the authority to the village manager to make a request for an advance of um, property tax monies. This really came up this year because there was some system issues at the county county auditor's uh, office and monies that we were expecting to receive in April did not come in. And so an inquiry was made and we were told that they were having system issues. But it is a standard practice that you can put in place a resolution that would give the authority to the village manager to, to request the monies early. Uh, as residents, we all know in the case of uh, the monies that we receive in April, we all pay those to the county auditor at the end of January. Uh, so they've already had the money for a couple months. So um, it is probably good practice to get the authority to the village manager to, to get us, give him the authority to get our money as soon as possible. So as I, in the, in the case that was confronted with us in April, the county auditor agreed to advance us the money without the resolution because they realized it was their problem. But I am hereby requesting that we approve resolution 2016-15, uh, which would give the village manager this authority in the future. So I, I move that we approve resolution 2016-15. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we approve resolution 2016-15, giving the uh, village manager the authority to request advance payment of taxes. Are there any questions or comments? Um, I just wanted to add the comment from the Finance Committee discussion. As it was probably evident from the finance report, it's not that we don't have enough money to meet our obligations. They're just not in the right funds. and it, Given the limits of municipal financing and accounting, it would be very challenging and time consuming to move the different funds around to cover the payrolls and things that were anticipated being covered by the payments that we normally receive in April. Okay, are there any other questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016 15. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimous. We will now move on to the Streets, Public Utilities, and Sewers Committee. Before Council is Resolution 2016-16, a uh, resolution authorizing the Village Manager to enter into a contract for the 2016 Street Rehabilitation Program. The 2016 Street Rehabilitation Program initially consisted of the repaving of Aracoma Drive Aracoma Drive East and West Aracoma and Aracoma Forest. The repaving of these streets was going to be in conjunction with the Cincinnati Water Works following their main water main project. The repaving of the Aracoma neighborhood streets has been delayed until 2017 due to a delay in the Cincinnati Water Works project. 
with the delay in the Aracoma paving and the possibility of missing the 2016 paving se season, staff began, began evaluating other streets to determine which streets should be moved forward on the repaving list to be part of the 2016 program. The 2016 program will consist of repairing and replacing curbs and gutters, stormwater catch basin repairs, and repaving of the entire streets as follows. Uh, paving, Spring Valley Drive, curbing and stormwater catch basin repairs, milling and paving of the entire street, Kincaid Road, Section Road to North Farm Press Drive, asphalt base repairs, milling and paving of the entire street, Patrissel Court, curbing and catch basin repairs, milling and paving of the entire street, Kentland Court, curbing and stormwater catch basin repairs, milling and paving of the entire street, Curbing, Long Meadow Lane, curb replacement from Ridge Road to Lamarck Drive, curb repairs from Lamarck Drive to Spring Valley Drive, Arbor Crest Drive, curb repairs from Lamarck Drive north to the terminus. Village Council authorized the assembly of a bid package including paving and curb repairs. These projects were packaged and advertised as a bundle for competitive bidding and bids were opened April 29th. The bid results resulted in very favorable, favorable pricing with two bids received. The lowest and best bid was submitted by Barrett Paving Materials in the amount of $614,288.55, including the three alter alternates, al three alternatives, which included Patricel Court, Pentland Court, and Arbor Crest Drive. Their bid was $27,717.36, less than the engineer's estimate and $84,302.72, less than the second bid. With the street program of $614,288.55, the municipal fund will pay $95,000 towards the paving of Kincaid Road, approximately $364,594.25 will be charged to the streets fund and approximately $154,694.30 will be charged to the stormwater fund based on the portion of the program related to the stormwater versus street work. While the bid strategy was successful at gaining very attractive pricing for the street improvement, the village was diligent in our inspection and contract administration to protect the village. So therefore, resolution 2016 authorizes the award of the bid to Baird Paving in the amount of $614,288.55, including the three alternates. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-16, authorizing the village manager to enter into the contract for the 2016 street program. Are there any questions or comments? Uh, first, I'd like to thank Mr. Bardak for chairing the last streets committee in my absence and uh, doing a great job presenting the uh, proposal. Um, one comment, um, the amount that uh, uh, is being charged to the streets fund is consistent with what we have been um, doing over the last few years. Um, so, so the amount that we're budgeting to this really doesn't represent um, uh, something new that we didn't allocate earlier. Other questions or comments? I mean, the only other comment I would make is, uh, as Councilman Bardak mentioned, 95,000 is coming from outside the village. And again, this is a case of our village administration being very successful and diligent at, at applying for grants to the extent they're available. And, and in this case, we were able to get a $95,000 $95, grant to pay for part of the program. So again, kudos to the administration. Are there any other questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-16. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be noted that the resolution passes unanimously. Resolution 2016-17 authorizes the village manager to enter into a contract with municipal and contractor sealing products to perform stormwater sewer lining at 3305, 3305 Lamarck Drive. This 
stormwater pipe located in the rear yard of 35, 3305 Lamarck Drive within the village stormwater easement was originally part of the 2015 stormwater program. The 2015 program received just two bids and both were rejected due to inconsistencies in the amount of the bids and lack of contractor experience in similar projects. Staff from the village engineer met and reviewed the project with three local contractors to determine the best and most efficient process for repairing the stormwater sewer. In situ form, a company that has installed cured in place stormwater lining on past projects for the village and had pulled their bid from the project in 2015 stated that due to the confinement <coughs> of the area, size, and amount of equipment they would need, it would not be cost efficient and did not provide a quote for this project. The foreman explained they would need to remove trees, sections of the fence, and most likely damage the driveway in the process. Municipal and contractor sealing products and Eurotech Holdings have similar products and methods of sealing the joints and cracks throughout the pipe, catch basins, and manholes. Both companies would have smaller and less equipment, would not require removing any trees, and would be the least disruptive to the resident's property. Both companies would install a reinforced concrete liner to seal all joints and cracks. The procedure both companies offer would be to clean the interior surface of the 42-inch concrete pipe and apply urethane grout to fill the larger voids in and around the joints as needed. Once the process is completed, they will put a small machine that would spray a high, straight, proprietary blend of mortars, resins, and additives that would protect the concrete from deterioration and improve structural integrity and provide better durability and longevity over replacement. With an engineer's estimate of $46,000, two quotes were received from the contractors. CT consultants reviewed the following quotes and found them to be in order. The engineer's estimate was $46,000. Municipal and contractor ceiling products estimate was $43,750. Eurotech Holdings came in at $49,150. Either contractor is more than able to complete the project to meet the village's satisfaction. CT consultants and staff recommends the project be awarded to municipal and, municipal and contractor ceiling products for their proposal of $43,750. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-17 authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract with the municipal and contractor ceiling products to perform the stormwater work on Lamarck Drive. Are there any questions or comments? If, if not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt re resolution 2016-17. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. Resolution 2016-18 is a proclamation for May, the week of May 15th through the 21st as National Public Works Weeks, National Public Works Week. The purpose is to promote public awareness and to show appreciation to the Amberley Village staff involved with maintenance department operations. The American Public Works Association set aside a week in May each year to celebrate those services provided by the maintenance departments throughout the country. The theme for this year's event is always there. The Amberley Village Maintenance Department is on call 24 hours a day, seven days a week for both maintenance department and fire department related duties. The department is responsible for a variety of tasks critical to the safety and the quality of life enjoyed by Amberley Village residents. Some of the services provided by the maintenance department include street and right of way repairs and maintenance, storm sewer pipe and catch basin restoration and repairs, snow and ice removal, brush clipping, leaf picking up, tree removal, litter control, maintaining guardrails and traffic signs, buildings and village-owned properties, vehicle maintenance, including fire department apparatus. In addition, our employees responded to flooded, trees, flooded streets, storm damage such as trees and tree limbs blown down in the right of way, while functioning traffic signals and damaged street signs. They also removed trash and other debris from the village streets to ensure a clean and safe community for residents and businesses. All seven employees are fully certified firefighters for the village. This makes the entire maintenance department trained as firefighters. So therefore, we see, we're seeking a resolution 2016-18 
proclaiming May 15 through 21 as National Public Works Week. Second. Is that a, are we making a motion? That was the motion. That's a motion. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-18 proclaiming, proclaiming May 15th to 21st as National Public Works Week in Amberley Village. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-18. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. And I assume that concludes the... That does conclude the report. Okay. We will now move on to the Public Buildings and Parks Committee. Okay. Uh, you have in the, your packet Ordinance 2016-10, regulating model aircraft on public property. Uh, this issue, sort of colloquially, colloquially known as drones, uh, was referred to the committee as a public safety matter in response to resident concerns about these devices being flown overhead at Amberley Green. The committee has met twice on this matter. First, on March 28th, uh, staff presented research indicating that Cincinnati and Hamilton <laughs> County have banned the use of these items in their parks and along with the national parks. And we learned that Blue Ash is in the process of developing a policy for drone use at their new Summit Park. Um, and it was particularly noted that in Amberley, the flying of drones on the municipal, this particular property, in addition to the Amberley Green, but here, is particularly problematic because of the 911 system and the radio tower. At the second meeting on April 25th, the committee reviewed a draft ordinance banning, you know, this use on public property in the village, and the ordinance had been prepared by our law director. We had a wide-ranging discussion that illustrated the complexities and ambiguities of drones, the matter of drones in general. There can be recreational or commercial or public safety uses. There can be privacy as well as safety concerns. There are questions about jurisdiction because the Federal Aviation Administration is in the process of developing regulations about drone flights. Given all these considerations and recognizing the specific role of the Public Buildings and Parks Committee, the ordinance before you prohibits the operation of model aircraft on public, party, public property in Amberley Village. It stops there which encompasses the municipal building grounds, Amberley Green, and the North Site. And the term model aircraft is used in the ordinance primarily to denote the recreational uses of lighter weight vehicles flying at levels below 400 feet, which above which is regula regulated by the FAA. So I'm presenting this ordinance for a first reading tonight. My hope is that we could waive the third reading next month and vote on it, in, which is June, and then it could be effective for the summer months when this may become more of an issue. So just... Okay, that was the first reading of this particular ordinance. Are there any questions or comments? It will, it will be on the agenda next month um, for, the, for the next reading. And, and as uh, Councilwoman Conway said, there may be a motion to waive the third reading at the next meeting. Uh, question. Um, should the village consider um, regulating drones um, over private property? That is, should, should we be considering moving beyond just public property for the reasons, I mean, basically almost for the same reasons you shared. Perhaps in a different committee, but mm -hmm. there are a lot of ambiguities right now because of the FAA having not yet fully weighed in on regulating commercial use. And we could surely regulate, we could develop something around like our own agency using them. But other than that, I think we might be stepping into a gray area that would be more trouble than it's worth, but that's that's really just my personal opinion. That's not a. I mean, Kevin, do you have any, anybody? Uh, there, there was some discussion at the last committee meeting, and it was. I, I think it was recognized as an important thing to keep considering, but the public buildings, public lands committee wasn't the place for it. That maybe it should be the land, uh, excuse me, law committee, or I think you had another suggestion too. But it's something that should be discussed. Just it wasn't part of the proposal being discussed by the committee. And this was responding to a very specific complaints and a very specific issue mm -hmm. in our park. Okay, any other questions or comments? That concludes my report of the Public Buildings and Parks Committee. Okay, we'll now move on to the Police and Fire Committee. Okay, the first item is Resolution 2016-19 
um, authorizing the village manager to enter into a contract to purchase equipment for police cruisers. Back in January, council approved the replacement of two cruisers. Delivery is anticipated later this month, so it is necessary to equip them as cruisers, which normally involves uh, removing certain equipment from the old vehicle and reinstalling it in the new. However, the cruisers being replaced this year are from two, the 2010 Chargers, which were purchased, used in 2012, and their equipment is not compatible with the SUVs that the department is now using. So some replacement items that will be needed are the partition that protects officers when prisoners are placed in custody, the prisoner transport seats that secure them in the rear of the cruiser and reduce the ability to hide weapons or contraband in the back seat, uh, additional lights in the rear for visibility when the trunk is up, and the light bars on the roof. Uh, Camp Safety is the vendor for servicing the cruisers and they have been competitive in pricing. When the new vehicles arrive from Ford, they will be delivered to Camp Safety for conversion to cruisers. The quote for equipment to be installed on both vehicles is not to exceed $17,864. Additionally, both new cruisers will be taken to SignTech to have reflective graphics applied to match the other cruisers in the fleet for a cost of $2,334. Uh, the Police and Fire Committee met on April 25th to review these expenditures and recommends their approval by Council. So I move that we adopt uh, Resolution 2016-19, authorizing the Village Manager to enter into a contract to purchase equipment for police cru cruisers. So moved. Second. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt Resolution 2016-19, authorizing the Village Manager to enter into a contract to purchase equipment for police cruisers. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-19. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Be it noted that the resolution passes unanimously. Okay, the next item is a very celebratory week here in the village. Uh, the second item is resolution 2016-20. Proclaiming the week of May 15 to 21, 2016 as National Law Enforcement Mor Memorial Week and May 15, 2016 as Peace Officers Memorial Day. Uh, the purpose of this resolution is to generate public attention and show appreciation to employees of the Amberley Police Department. Uh, in 1960, this originates from 1962 when President John F. Kennedy signed a proclamation which designated these days, 15, the May 15th, as Peace Officers Memorial Day and the week in which this date falls as Police Week. During this week, all Amberley Village police officers will wear a black band across their badges in memory of all the law enforcement officers who have given their lives in the line of duty. This symbolic gesture deeply affects all police officers because they know that every year an average of 145 American police officers are killed in the line of duty in the United States, and over 58,000 officers are assaulted in the performance of their duties. Tomorrow, which is Tuesday, May 10th, a local ceremony with Amberley Police participation will take place at Fountain Square in downtown Cincinnati beginning at 11 a.m. A parade will follow to the Hamilton County Police Memorial located at Cincinnati Police District 1 headquarters on Ezra Charles Drive. I have attended this several times and it is really a very lovely and meaningful event. You can just do one half or the other depending on your schedule or both. So all residents are welcome and encouraged to attend. Uh, during Police Week, an Amberley Village police officer will travel <laughs> to Washington, D.C. to participate in the national events with police from all over the country. Uh, the Police Fire Committee met on April, April 25th and recommends the passage of this resolution, 2016-20, uh, proclaiming this week as National Law Enforcement Memorial Week and the 15th as Peace Officers Memorial Day. So moved. Second. <laughs> Wake up, everybody. Okay. <laughs> it's been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-20. Proclaiming the week of May 15, 21, as National Law Enforcement Memorial Week, uh, and May 15, 2016, as Peace Officer Memorial Day here in Amberley Village. Are there any questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt Resolution 2016 20. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We noted that the resolution passes unanimously. And that concludes my report. Thank you. We will now move on to the Land Development Committee, and I am the chair of the Land Development Committee, so I will be presenting the report. Uh, as Council knows, at our April meeting, we considered 
a contract related to uh, the possible development of Amberley Green, and council decided that it did not want to uh, move forward on that particular proposal at that point. Uh, in the meantime, uh, the village manager and I met with um, Mr. Mark Fisher from uh, the Jewish Community Center, and the Jewish Community Center has been expressing an interest with us of working with us to look at options for uh, expanding their presence on Amberley Green. Uh, and so uh, Mr. Fisher submitted a letter to um, Mr. Larmer and myself, and that letter was presented at the Land Development Committee meeting uh, last week. And what is before you today is Resolution 2016-21, which would basically say that we as the village think it's a, it's a good idea that we work with the Jewish Community Center to develop uh, these options. The Jewish Community Center is asking for between 90 and 120 days for them to work up uh, the options of what they would propose to put on the property. And they are going to be doing that at their cost. Uh, and during this 90 to 120 day period, we clearly will be working with the Jewish Community Center and giving them access to our reports that we have on the property. Uh, but I, I really believe this is a win-win uh, a for both organizations. The Jewish Community Center is clearly a very important uh, resident to the village uh, and one that we want to work at. It is a resident of the village that provides services both to its members and in this particular case, the Jewish Community Center wants to look at options to provide possibility of things for the, the wider residents of Amberley Village. So this, this to me is a, a, is a great opportunity uh, to really sit back and, and take, a, take a break and look at what, what could be done with this property that I think would be very exciting uh, for our residents and as I said, also important for an important resident of the village in the Jewish Community Center. So I hereby uh, move that we adopt resolution 2016-21 authorizing the Jewish Community Center to consider prospective development on Amberley Green for this 90 to 120 day period. Okay, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-21 uh, authorizing the Jewish Community Center to consider prospective development on Amberley Green. Are there any questions or comments? Thank you. Um, I agree with everything you said, and thank you um, very much. I think two quick things. One is, you know, I, I don't necessarily even see it as a as a pause or a, a step back. It's really a, very much a step forward. I think the JCC has been part of the discussion for a long time, and I think many, many folks in the village feel that this is um, something that we, we thought would be part of this uh, at every step. It's, it's really, um, it's, it's great, it's great news. Um, I did wanna mention though, we talked about in land development also that during that period, there will be updates from the J and from land development will hopefully meet again during that period. I just wanted to mention that because obviously continuing community input engagement, you know, um, information uh, is, is paramount in this, in this particular process. So we, we will I assume meet, be meeting again, yeah. Are there other questions or comments? If not, it has been moved and seconded that we adopt resolution 2016-21. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Be noted that the resolution passes unanimous. Uh, we will now move on to the Health Education and Welfare Committee. Thank you. The Health Education and Welfare Committee met twice since our last council meeting. On April 11th, the committee met to discuss the ongoing issue of pedestrian safety. Amberley, being an older suburb that was built without sidewalks and with minimal road shoulder in order to foster a rural atmosphere, um, but as time has passed, highways have been constructed and newer suburbs to the north and east of us have been built, our roads have become less safe for any other sort of travel besides by car. On the other hand, our citizens, as well as citizens all over the country, have become more active and require the use of our roadways for walking and cycling. Amberley also is home to a significant Jewish population, which travels exclusively by foot 
on Friday nights and Saturdays in order to access neighborhood synagogues and in general to enjoy a walk on Shabbat. With all of this in mind, the Health Education and Welfare Committee has devoted a significant amount of time over the course of the last year and a half to focus on making Amberley Village a safer place for pedestrians. So in our most recent meeting on, well, not the most, most recent, but our meeting on the 11th, uh, we met to discuss the, um, the experiment of installing temporary road humps, uh, street safety humps on, uh, in the neighborhood streets and uh, to see how those were going. And um, uh, it was determined that a better assessment could be had by instead of having two safety humps on, or speed humps on two separate streets, but by moving both of them to the same street at approximately 200 to 300 foot intervals. So we're going to try that. Um, also, speed sign data, you may have seen the speed signs um, posted at different streets I think we began last spring and we collected data all through the summer. We moved, we moved the signs and what we were doing was um, recording our residents' speeds, uh, not for ticketing purposes, but for informational purposes. So we uh, analyzed that data. And then finally, we are looking into, um, uh, in particular, the West, a west side sidewalk installation, possibly from Section Road to uh, 7085 Elbrook. Uh, we're looking at costs and whether it's even feasible given the uh, status of the Gibson property right now. And we will also be um, reviewing suggestions for a resolution to try to put all of our efforts in writing uh, for future safety measures. Today, the committee met to discuss our favorite subject, the deer. Um, we have a deer policy in Amberley Village that was enacted, uh, I believe, in 2012. And as part of that policy, we have an infrared deer count every three years. So the first one was in 2013, and the second one was this year. And uh, and what that does, it's an aerial flyover that actually does a count of individual deer using infrared technology. So in 2013, um, the total number of deer, both inside the lines of the village and immediately outside in a buffer zone was 239 deer on one particular day at one particular time. And then three years later, that same, the number was 248. So it's going, going up, but just a little over three years. What, what the committee decided to do is to continue our current program of culling up to 50 deer a year before additional permission by council is needed. And we will also, at the suggestion of some of our residents, we will, are going to explore what other neighboring communities are doing with regard to um, allowing residents or not allowing residents to feed the deer and we are encouraging our residents not to feed the deer and not to feed the wildlife in their yards but it's not a law in Amberley as yet and uh, we are exploring whether or not to make it so um, and we are aware of uh, the experimental program in being done in Clifton and we are following that very closely and um, the last thing we were going to explore was um, the viability of oral contraceptives of the deer and that concludes my report thank you very much are there questions for the vice mayor what's the program in Clifton oh and well Clifton this year has uh, received a grant as well as uh, significant donations from interested residents that uh, and they engaged in a sterilization program uh, I forget the it was a 30 deer at a thousand dollars a piece um, and a, a residence garage was uh, set up as the um, operating theater for the <laughs> procedure 
And uh, so this, we are not allowed to do this in the state. We, we can't just go and catch the deer and, and sterilize the deer, but this is being done as a, an experimental program through ODNR and, um, and, and everybody is following it to see how it works. Any other questions or comments? All right, thank you. We will now move on to the manager's report. I wanted to highlight a couple items from the manager's report. Um, in regards to always looking at ways to decrease our expenses, the village will be selling a total of four vehicles uh, this upcoming month. It does not require council authorization, but it was discussed in the uh, police and fire committee, so I just wanted to make council aware of that, that we are disposing of four vehicles uh, in, our, in our police fleet. The ice cream social date has been set. I want to announce that to residents. It's been set for Sunday, August the 7th. So it'll be held here at the uh, municipal building. So August 7th, the annual ice cream social. And there's been um, a press and some questions raised about the former Gibson building. So I, want, I wanted to mention what is occurring there. The Hamilton County Port Authority uh, began embarking on their strategic plan this past fall and their plan is to acquire property for manufacturing. Uh, they announced their intentions to do this and uh, then came across a property in Amberley Village uh, known to most of us as the uh, Gibson greeting card building. And so they entered into a purchase agreement in the fall and anticipate that they'll be able to close on that particular property purchase in June of, of this year and the ports uh, plan is to acquire the property and then uh, work with the uh, Regional Economic Development Initiative as well as uh, the, the Village of Amberley to market the site and uh, land a business on that particular site. But that will also entail most likely raising the entire building. Uh, so from a positive standpoint, that means that there will likely be a tenant on that building uh, in the future, a larger, larger tenant at that since it is uh, approximately 54 acres. The downside of it is we will go a few years without any kind of revenue off of that property, albeit property tax and most importantly earnings tax that we will not receive off of, off of that property. But it is um, uh, good news that the Port Authority has stepped in and we will work with them as well as with the Regional Economic Development Initiative Cincinnati to uh, land a tenant on that site. So that's good news. I've been made aware that uh, we have received, residents are, are um, complaining, uh, registering concerns about the postal service here in the village. I just wanted to mention that because uh, the residents have inquired about an outlet in order to register some of their concerns. I have been contacted by the uh, postal service and they have given me an email address for residents to uh, register any concerns they have about uh, mail delivery, whether you're getting your mail or not getting it on time, or if you believe something is missing, those types of things. Uh, that will be posted on our uh, website, and we'll also post that on, on Nextdoor. Um, I'll, I'll list that right now. The, the email address that residents can uh, communicate with at this point would be manager.45212 at USPS.gov. So that's manager.45212 at USPS.gov. Uh, I think you're aware the Norwood Branch uh, delivery area covers most of uh, most of the areas of the village, uh, 45237 and a couple other zip codes in the area. And, uh, I have found that the, some of the complaints that I have received when I've been dealing with the Postal Service, they've been very responsive to me trying to identify what the issue is. So I'd encourage residents to communicate with, uh, with the Postal Service about any concerns that they might have on mail delivery. <clears throat> and that concludes the items I wanted to mention. Thank you. There are any questions from the This is unrelated really to anything you just said, but uh, next door, there's been a, a series of com comments on next door about the utility boxes that have been added mm -hmm. on Farmcrest. Mm -hmm. I, is that something we had any knowledge of being done or any opportunity for comment. The comments were they're unsightly and different colors and in the way or whatever. Uh, I was just curious if that was something that ever even came across your desk or happened outside of our uh, awareness. Yes, this has probably been a few months ago and we frequently get requests from Duke or other utility companies to do work in the right way. 
and uh, we're obligated to give them uh, permission to work in the right way. And th in this situation, we did. Uh, they did identify that in the uh, North Farmcrest area, they were gonna be upgrading their uh, electric uh, capability in that area, and they were gonna be installing uh, the, what I refer to as the green transmission boxes. It was my understanding that they would be working with the individual homeowners on, on this, but uh, the electric there is underground, so these, uh, these boxes that they are installing are necessary in order for them to upgrade their system in that area. From, uh, from a village standpoint, you, you know that we have uh, the Farmcrest subdivision on our radar screen for a, an entire street redo. Uh, we had applied for a grant this past year. We were not successful on it, but we plan on applying again this next year. And uh, one of the items that Duke had mentioned is they were gonna be uh, doing some boring underneath the roadway and probably under some driveways. So we certainly saw that as being a positive, getting it done in advance before we secure funds to go in and totally redo the streets. Uh, but uh, Duke is certainly within their, their, their purview to go in and to do this work. And it certainly is uh, probably going to be an upgrade. Um, it may not look like it from a resident standpoint, but it probably is an upgrade because those, those typically those green boxes are visible in most communities where you have that underground electric. Any other questions for the mayor? Now we will move on to the Chief's report, Lieutenant Bloom. Yes, I just have a couple things I'd like to mention. The uh, officer that's going to be going to Washington, D.C. for the uh, National Law Enforcement Memorial Week will be Sergeant Mike Koenig. He's going to be representing Amberley Village and the Hamilton County Police Association Honor Guard, and he will be performing there in uh, Washington during that week. Um, along the lines with the police department, um, Officer Alt responded up to Pennsylvania to Shallow Creek Kennels and picked up our canine on April the 29th. Um, and he started training with her on May the 2nd. He is a 14 month old, 70 pound male. He's a mix of a German Shepherd and a Belgian Malinois. Um, and we anticipate his training to go through August, beginning of August. We anticipate he'll be graduating August 8th uh, with the uh, OPATA certification, which is the Ohio Police Officer Training Academy certification for Officer Alt and our new canine. So hopefully by mid-August we'll have him available and at some events and I'm sure that he'll be able to make an appearance at the Ice Cream Social for sure. So um, that's it for the canine. And then as far as the fire department goes, um, I'd like to commend um, our grant writer Sandy Pywin and Officer Chris Fritch. Um, they received a grant from the state of Ohio for $10,800 for it's a training grant for fire officers. Um, the significance of that is, is not every community or agency was able to get one. And as a matter of fact, in the state of Ohio, that grant was $2,100 more than any other community in the state of Ohio received. So we're going to be able to apply that to some additional training for our fire officers. So that concludes my report. Are there any questions for Lieutenant Flynn? I just wanted to thank you. I attended the um, Clements Burn this year, and I wanted to just thank the um, department for their incredible work and the unique opportunity that that is, and just please um, convey that to your team. That was really, really great. Thank you. I will. Any other questions? Does the dog have a name? Okay, uh, we will now move on to the marriage report. And first, uh, as the council rep on the Environmental Stewardship Committee, I just want to give a report from, from that committee. Um, as I, most residents know, we held our, I think it's our fourth annual one-stop drop uh, on April 10th. We recycled 33 tons, which was more than 10 tons more than we recycled last year. Uh, it was, there were definitely some issues with traffic as residents probably in the area and, and it's something that the environment, Environmental Stewardship Committee is going to meet to discuss as to whether there's something we can do to improve on that situation. But we uh, recycled 16 tons of electronics, 14 tons of paper, 2 tons of textiles, and a new item this year uh, which was not just uh, recycling, 
it was reuse, uh, a local um, nonprofit called Scrap Natty accumulated some uh, just odds and ends for use in um, art projects. And they, in doing so, they gathered over 500 pounds of that. Um, this is all part of Amberly's focus on recycling. In 2015, Amberly recycled 465 tons, which meant that we are now up to 26% of our waste is now recycled. And I think that's the high water mark that we've achieved at 26. I think we had gotten to 25, and then I think we stepped back to 24, but we're now up to 26. So uh, with that, as, as we increase our uh, recycling, it does benefit us financially because we do get money back from Hamilton County. And in the case of 2015, we received $15,000 back. And the higher, higher uh, recycling rates we have, the more money we get. Um, on April 25th, the Environmental Stewardship Committee celebrated Arbor Day. Um, we also celebrated on that day, uh, the, that is our 12th, this, this is our 12th consecutive year of being designated a Tree City USA community, so we celebrated that. During the, that evening, we viewed a film titled Trees in Trouble, and this film was put together locally, and it very much focused on the challenges facing our trees, like emerald ash borer, uh, and it very much focused, it also went back in, in kind of identified what was done um, more than 50 years ago to really start to develop our tree canopy uh, in the greater Cincinnati area and, and focused on what some local governments and residents did to really start to plant trees. And, and basically what it's saying is it's time to probably do it again. Uh, this was an excellent film and I think uh, it's something we will look to possibly repeat because I think it is, um, you know, a very informational and good film. Um, also on that day, we, we read a proclamation and we also discussed the 46th year of Earth Day uh, and, and kind of discussed what that Earth Day has been through the years. And finally, we did plant a tree down uh, in the area along the walking track where we have lost a number of trees over the past few years. And finally, with respect to the Environmental Stewardship Committee, the next meeting will be May 23rd at 7 o'clock. With respect to the mayor's report, before we get back to the gas pipeline, I just want to uh, again stress that on June 2nd, uh, we will be having two uh, public meetings, which we've tried to do over the last, I think we've, we held two of these about two years ago, and these are meant to just give updates to the residents on important matters. So we will be discussing finances, we will be discussing, you know, kind of what's been going on in the police department. These are public sessions that will be held at the Jewish Community Center. There will be one at one o'clock and one at seven o'clock on June 2nd and we encourage residents to attend. Uh, it's a great opportunity to hear about what's going on and possibly ask questions or whatever. Uh, and then, as I said, on the gas pipeline, um, I'm interested in what council uh, would like to do with respect to this. Definitely the Environmental Stewardship Committee will be meeting, uh, as I said, on May 23rd, and that will be on our agenda to discuss you know, whether we want to issue a letter as the committee, uh, what that letter looks like, or, or whatever. And I didn't know whether the uh, council wanted to refer this to one of its committees, whether it wants to wait and see what the Environmental Stewardship Committee comes out with as far as a possible letter. I mean, it could be that, you know, we um, come up with a letter and make that available to residents as a form of a letter that they could send in or whatever. So. I'm interested in, in what you want to do at this point. Well, I think there's a lot of things that we can do that, uh, and I think that's an excellent idea to 
develop a letter that our residents can use because sometimes they just don't have the people don't have the words or don't know what to say so they avoid but um, I think it would be helpful if each of us could individually but use but could individually weigh in and send an email or write a letter but sign it with our uh, council designation um, and I'm not sure can we uh, pass a res we could pass a resolution certainly it would seem because to have even if we discounted the environmental aspect of any of it if we just said it's going to be construction going straight through the middle of our village I don't think that even that traffic can bear that for the length of time that it would take to construct such such a thing and to turn left out of the my neighborhood to get to a council meeting is, uh, you know, I'm I sometimes feel like I need to call the police to direct me out to make a left turn. It's, it's just Ridge Road is a disaster, and and to use that as an artery for for a natural gas pipeline seems to me, you know, what was the wrong with all the other options, 197 options that they came down to us? But my opinion. I think um, while I agree um, that there are certainly many things we can do, I like the letter idea. I do think having the, I think the, uh, my understanding of the Environmental Stewardship Committee is there's going to really be a lot of information provided, um, both for our benefit and for the residents' benefit. So I think utilizing that as a resource, as a starting point, and, and in the meantime, you know, us all writing letters and, and pr going down that path is good. I mean, I think the Environmental Stewardship is, is uh, committee is is um, well prepared to um, give us better advice and and kind of a better um, much more informed um, place to kind of go from there and then we can we can certainly come back at our next meeting and although is that is our next meeting too late do we think no and so we have the opportunity at our next meeting to to, to take some action but I, I recommend that we um, have the, that meeting and also potentially whatever the community meetings are that are being planned that I think um, Mary mentioned that there are being planned for the multiple communities to learn more about this. So. I'm just wondering from just from a logistic standpoint, so in drafting a resolution you would need to get the solicitor engaged in preparing that, right? And that's something that the Environmental Stewardship Committee typically does not have access to. No. Well, the Environmental Stewardship Committee is not a committee of council. Okay. So, in fact, if, if, if we want to do a resolution in council, I think I would recommend that we refer the item to a committee to consider right. that. And, and you know, maybe that's something we can do. Maybe, maybe the committee will determine, you know, I mean, if we refer it to a committee, um, they could work it following... <laughs> the May 23rd meeting and determine whether um, council should do something. So I just want to make sure I understand. You're su su suggesting that possibly following the May 23rd meeting, a committee of council would take up the issue to kind of pull thoughts together as a council resolution for the June meeting. We could, yeah, we could refer it to a council, a committee this evening. And then the, the particular committee could meet after May 23rd, after they have that information, and consider whether it made sense for council to do a resolution or whatever. I think that makes sense. I think it makes sense definitely to wait till after May 23rd. Like, we, I, I would not favor council inventing its own process to put together. We, we might as well tap into what's already happening. Otherwise, it becomes a kind of a duplicative effort. Any other comments? So this is just, it would be following this May 23rd meeting, the information would be moved to the HEW committee? Is that there, there, there is not a, a committee that I would say it fits perfectly, um, but if, if, if council is amenable to referring it to the HEW committee, that's fine with me. Well, I would like to request that if that happens, that somebody from the, uh, uh, the who's at the May 23rd meeting be available at the committee meeting or at sure. least make available sure. the points that would they would want 
or that we would want to see mm -hmm. in a resolution so we're not starting from a blank. Right. I will make that commitment and I will Thank you. be available. <laughs> Thank you, Representative of Environmental Stewardship. <laughs> Any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, We'll now move on to new business. I'm going to defer. Okay. Any, any council member have any new business? If not, we can consider the meeting adjourned. Thank you very much.